Hi there. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today, Mooch is joining us. I don't know if you can see her. But yeah, Mooch is here. Um, and her and I are just chilling. And um, we're going to be talking about, like, just like a writing update, I guess, for anyone who cares. <laughs> or like a writing update for my work. <laughs> Again, if you care. I don't know. Um, this is more for me to do a check-in and vent. Um, and <laughs> just kind of let you guys know where I'm at with my work. Um, and if you are also a writer who needs to vent about writing, feel free to do so in the comments down below. We got this. Okay. So um, I just kind of wanted to talk about like my current projects I have going on um, and like the, the progress on them and then like you know, maybe a timeline for stuff coming out this year that I think I might have talked about a few months ago, but I don't know 100%. So, yeah. So, basically, as you guys know, I've been working on my latest project mod since last year. I started it last year. And honestly, the progress on that has not been great. Um, I found myself kind of stuck um, with writing, and I'm not really sure what direction to go into. And the more I write, I'm starting to realize that this might be a little bit more literary than what I'm used to writing um, and like conceptual as opposed to like a hard sci-fi or just straight up horror because most of the scenes I've been, have, that I've been writing have been about Maud's life in particular um, or like the story of her life or like major events in her life. Um, and I enjoy that because I think there's a couple scenes that I really like and I want to stay, but other parts that I, I'm seeing, I'm just like, oh, I got to switch that up or there's certain beginning chapters I feel the need to rewrite because um, I do want to pitch this book and I want the first chapter to be good and the first chapter would just be like an introduction to her family basically um, and like I, I want there to be like a twist at the end so like you want to keep reading, you know, um, it's just kind of hard and I'm trying to figure out like the pacing of it in terms of like how much is it about small town living and how much is it about like existential alien type stuff and I just use the word alien loosely but um yeah anyway so, so I'm kind of stuck so I think my next step is, and this is something I've talked about doing but um, I really want to do it over Easter weekend, which is going to be this upcoming weekend when I'm filming this. I might not post it in time, so Easter might have already passed. But I'm really, really hoping that I can interview some women in my life who have been born and raised and, you know, been in the Midwest their entire lives and kind of get more um, perspective and insight from them. Since my main character is a Midwestern grandmother and she's had certain lived experiences that I just I just don't have. Um, I'm not like a parent and I'm certainly not a grandparent. So there's elements to that that I want to tap into, but not about like, oh, I love children and I want to take care of children and I want to do that. But more so about how that stuff really impacts you and your thinking, like your priorities, I guess, or like your your perspective of the world, you know. Um, like, you know, I got a dog, <laughs> but, but like, that's different than like a whole human being. And even being like taking care of her for like the first week, like, I mean, the first day that I picked her up, like I had, she was up every two hours and I really felt like I was with a baby and I was like losing my mind. <laughs> um, so like, yeah, I'm like kind of getting those experiences like secondhand, I guess. Um, and so she's kind of been helping me figure that out. Um, she as in Mooch has been helping me figure that out a little bit but still I don't I don't know if it's exactly right just yet so I, I don't know <laughs> so yeah mod mod is a piece of work and it needs more work but I've been kind of avoiding mod and like working on some other like personal projects so um yeah so okay in addition to that so so we have mod mod I'm going to like just kind of talk about like I have what's it called is it called Truly? I'm going to put it up here. There's a website that helps me organize things that I've started using um, at the recommendation of my husband and some other writer people I know. Um, so I've been using that to organize my thoughts and everything. Um, so yeah, so I um, also have a piece coming out in May for a anthology that is about writing and the this horrors of writing, right? So I have a short story coming out on that. I just got them edits. I got my edits back and sent them to the editor. 
Um, so that should be ready to go in May, and I'll keep you guys updated about that. Um, I think it's good. So uh, that short story is about a, a woman who is a romance author, but she reads her um, like daughter's diary for romance inspiration, even though the kids are like in elementary school. So um, you know, gray areas. Is that ethical? Ooh, and then like spooky, spooky stuff happens as a consequence. So yeah. Anyway, so that, that's what's coming out in May for sure, for sure. Um, I also have a short story that I think is coming out in like the fall. When I have more information on that, I'll like set it out to you guys. But I got accepted into a anthology called Dark Decades, and it's about technology. And um, mine would be the more recent installment because they have like oh this is horror stories about the telephone when the telephone was invented or this is a horror story about like the television and the computers and blah 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 so mine's a more recent installment that's talking about more of like um technology listening into on you but also like artificial intelligence I guess and mine is kind of like that <laughs> but like not really but kind of um mine is more of a short story about like chat gpt gone wrong almost so um i know i've talked about this before but basically it's about like a deactivated um facebook profiles or like dead facebook profiles so like the profiles of users who have passed away um and facebook rumored at one point in time was considering leaving a chat gpt option for those profiles so people can interact with their loved ones um while they were grieving and so that was, that's what my story is about. It, like, hypothetically, if that happened, um, I, to my knowledge, I don't think that's actually going to happen. It feels more Black mirror -y, I guess. I think there's a Black Mirror episode that's very similar to this that I found out about, like, after writing said piece, but I promise they're not that similar at all. Um, but yeah, so anyway, there's that. So those two are definitely getting published this year. Um, right now, I also submitted a, um, I submitted a pitch to Mad X. Uh, medium which is a again small publishing company and they want to do a series of like novellas or like really short novels so like 20 to 30 thousand words um that read in the style of like goosebumps kind of or like those little books that you would read from the library in the 90s that were like short scary books um so they were looking for that they were looking for like 90s themed horror things and obviously i don't have it written yet because the call was put out in march um, I think it's still going on too. If you're interested in submitting a pitch for that, don't quote me on it though, because I don't know what the time this video is going up. Um, but it's Mad X Media and we're supposed to find out in April whether or not like, um, our stories are accepted. So we'll see. Um, I wrote a pitch, which is basically just like taglines, a summary. Um, I started an outline for it, um, and submitted some samples or some of my other work to them so they can like figure out my writing style. Um, so we'll see if they like me. I figured that like with how my current branding is going for a lot of my s stories and like how yeah, I have cursed images, which is basically all nostalgia core from like the early 2000s, um, that this kind of thing would be right up my alley. So I made a pitch about a, um, what would be a very short horror novella about, again, a young child feeling very lonely. <laughs> um, I feel like that's an overarching theme in my work. Um, but a young child feeling very lonely, and so they're playing a Pokemon-like game uh, called Junsei Monsters. And um, when they caught, when they catch monsters in the game, they collect friends in real life. Um, but also, there's a twist, like about what happens if you let a Pokemon faint, or like a Junsei monster faint, and uh, that kind of is the horror part of said horror story. So I'm looking forward to feedback on that, um, and I'll let you guys know if it's accepted or not. If it is accepted, that's probably going to be like my main focus and like my shifting gears for the summer, especially um, because then that project will have like a set deadline and that will have after that will have like a concrete publishing schedule that might trickle into 2025. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed, because I feel like, you know, if you guys know me, I'm like so passionate about Pokemon in general. Like I have all my Pokemon plushies. I have like two Pokemon tattoos. You know that that's my jam. So um, if I got to write a Pokemon inspired type piece, um, that would be like super, super cool. So <laughs> um, yeah, so just wish me luck, I guess, on that project. And if it doesn't come to be, then I don't know, maybe I'll still go through with it and self-publish that. 
or maybe I'll just keep it on the back burner for a short story idea instead of a full length novella. Um, but yeah, and then something I've been working on recently that I haven't really talked about to anybody is been really, really hush hush. Um, is like, I guess it might be a novella or it might be a full romance. I don't know yet. Um, but I've been working on a like fun game lit story that's really taking my mind off of mod and like I'm not stressing out about mod and I've been literally last week since I started writing concretely I've been like getting at least a thousand words in every single day like I've been so productive compared to like what I normally do and I don't know if it's having a more rigid schedule with mooch or if it's like me just being excited about this project um but I've been like really hitting my word counts with this it is a choose your own adventure game lit <laughs> If you don't know what Gamelit is, Gamelit is like basically literature that's based off of video games or like literature that incorporates mechanics from video games into the book. I think the most well-known probably for people who don't play games, that's Gamelit, I think is technically Ready Player One. I feel like that can be classified as Gamelit, um, but other things like there's books on pretty much a whole ton of gaming franchises, but a lot of them kind of... Um, read like you're playing a game and a lot of them the game lit ones are high fantasy so um i guess i don't know if dd counts as game lit i think it does but anyway so, so um you have a lot of high fantasy game lit so like those books are really long like a hundred and twenty thousand words i mean most fantasy is like pretty if you have like high fantasy it's pretty pretty big books um, my books are uh, dark fantasy but they're only around a hundred thousand words so 90 to 100 um but for this book it's not necessarily a fantasy story um it's like if okay so the, how this came to be i know i'm jumping around with my brain in my thoughts i'm so sorry but like so this is a choose your own adventure gamelet but it is like if you're playing a dating simulator so it's a romance game and I got this idea because we went to Fan Expo with uh, in Boston last year. Uh, I went with my husband and our neighbors, and we went to a game lit panel. And I was listening to all these examples of people writing game literature and stuff. Um, there's even like game lit for like life simulators that are just like cozy and like if you live in a small town type thing, which I feel like could cross over to like cozy fantasy or like you know even cozy horror. I guess I don't know. I'll make a video on cozy horror soon. That's my next video idea. So keep on the lookout. <laughs> but um, yeah, so like that was, everyone's talking about Galen in that context. A lot of it was fantasy based. Um, but then I asked the question like, yeah, well, what if you like had game lit, but it was like a dating simulator. You know what I mean? Because those games are really popular online, especially like when I, you know, me being a girly girl <laughs> or me being like, you know, um, I played a couple of uh, dating simulators too, and I really like the unhinged ones that are more focused on like comedy than like actual dating. <laughs> um, that's just me. Like, if you play the pigeon dating simulator, you know, okay, period. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, I like goofy shit like that. So, um, and the feedback I got from the people on the panel was that like this hasn't really been done a whole lot before. They referenced one person who tried this, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but they said that it's not really a staple in Gamelet yet, girl, yet. <laughs> so um, that's where I got this idea for this. And it's been on the back burner for a while. And I've just been kind of like working on this as like filler in between going through hard stuff with mod. Um, but yeah, so I have it set up where it's like a choose your own adventure because I feel like that was the best way to incorporate those sorts of game mechanics because it's basically like dialogue heavy for like uh, choose your own for um, dating simulators, a lot of it is like dialogue heavy and then you like choose your responses and then based on your responses, you get points with like the person you're trying to like romance um, and stuff like that. So, so far mine is like not really like dialogue heavy, I guess, cause sure. But it is like you make decisions and those decisions do impact your relationship with whatever character you're trying to romance. Um, so yeah, I've been kind of doing it in a choose your own adventure style because I feel like that style of reading is best for the game mechanics that I want to employ. Um, so yeah, this is more so about like you putting VR on and doing a dating simulator 
in the middle of the pandemic. Um, this is written in second person because most choose your own adventures are written in second person. Choose your own adventures, I think, are only twenty to thirty thousand words because I don't know if they're just meant more for like younger audiences or what. Um, but then I saw that like the average romance is around sixty thousand words, so I'm gonna try to aim my book someplace in between that, like twenty to sixty, um, and I'm just gonna write and see where it goes i'm not really gonna have a set thing in mind because i'm really not sure how to market this because it is game lit but it's also a choose your own adventure and it's also like a i would say paranormal romance i don't want to like spoil anything but you have like five romanceable options and um basically they like i have a setup where you go on like ideally you would go on three dates with them and then they would reveal some sort of truth to you and then you decide whether or not like you want to pursue them after that. That's kind of like the structure I have going right now. But um, there's also opportunities where like other romanceful NPCs kind of pop up on your dates. So you have the option to like go with them instead if you like want to change your mind. Because like dating is dating. You know, you don't have to marry the first person you date. <laughs> you know? Oh, sorry. Mooch is like watching a car. Watching them try to parallel park it is very entertaining. That's what I do up here anyway. Um... But yeah, so it's kind of like that. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. Um, I don't normally write romance, so maybe my romance isn't super awesome. I'm really not sure if I'm going to put any steamy scenes in it or not. Um, I don't really read a lot of steamy scenes, so I'm not sure. But um, this has just been like a fun side project to do in between writing mod because I do think mod will take a lot more time and, you know, maybe I'll also publish that and like that will come out maybe at the end of this year depending on like <laughs> how proactive I am with this dating sim type book. Um, again, you know, I've, I kind of kept this a little bit closer to my chest because I did think this was a more unique idea and I, you know, I didn't want to share it or jinx it or like put it out there and like people would be like, Oh my God, blah, 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 I'm going to do this now too. Which I mean, I guess you can like, you know, there's no guarantee that like we're going to write the same thing. Even if I tell you what genres I'm writing in, so yeah, but basically that's kind of what I've been working on right now. So I'm kind of all over the place <laughs> and um, yeah, so, so wish me luck, I guess. I don't know. So I'm kind of all over the place with work and again, like even the game lit project will be on the back burner if I get accepted to this like um, Goosebumps Pokemon themed uh, or if I get, if my Pokemon themed story gets accepted by these like uh 90s told it's called totally freaked this totally a freaked um not anthology because it's not short stories it's like a collection of mini books so if i get accepted into that collection um that will be the project that i'm going to be working on and promoting the most um and then the other stuff will fall to the wayside just because that will have like a for sure deadline um but yeah so that's kind of where, where i'm at with my writing um where are you at with your writing what are you working on <laughs> let me know in the comments down below um, thank you so much for listening to me ramble and kind of like freak out about stuff. Um, I don't know. Sometimes this helps to vent, but yeah, <laughs> feel free to vent if you need to in my comments. I'm always here for you. And um, until next time, thanks. Bye.